So by now, most of us have seen the new Kenworth Super Truck 2, and it's a pretty interesting truck. But let's look at it with an open mind. I've heard all the negative stuff about it, but let's look at it with an actual open mind about what this truck is and what the technology in this truck can do for trucking in the future. Hey everybody, so the Kenworth Super Truck 2 came out and I had seen some pictures of it, but now it was actually, you know, came out and was shown in Las Vegas at the, uh, I forget what was going on in Las Vegas, Advanced Clean Transportation Act Expo in Las Vegas. Apparently there was all kinds of trucks, but this one really hit home. Now, I've actually seen a lot of comments saying, oh great, another electric concept truck. Uh, this truck is an electric. This truck is diesel driven. Okay, and it does have an electric system in it that could blow everybody's mind. People are complaining about it. You know, this is this truck is extreme. This truck is a concept and it's extreme. I'm not saying they're not going to come out with it. But I am saying that some of the technology that they came up with for this truck is absolutely amazing and is going to help the trucking world just incredibly in the future. There's actually some concepts in here that they made work that people have been trying to do for years and were maybe just a little bit too ahead of their times. But the idea was a great idea. And let's get into that. So apparently, the biggest problem that people are saying, as I said, is that this truck is electric, and it's not. In fact, the whole idea of this was for them to come out with a super efficient truck using the proven thing that works, and that is diesel. It's always been diesel. I'm not saying that electric isn't going to happen. Electric is happening. I'm saying I don't see it overall in the long haul world yet. I'm not saying it won't get there. I just don't see it yet. Um, they, they haven't been able to get the distance capabilities out of it yet. Uh, it it's just hasn't been efficient enough yet. Uh, but don't worry, the electric truck is, is, is moving pretty fast. But this truck is using the diesel. So, what Kenworth wanted to do was improve over a 2009 T660, which was their most fuel-efficient truck at the time, uh, in 2009 when they started doing this. Now, this has been a long time coming. It actually took them six years of working on it just to even make this happen. So, you know, they spend that much time on it. They're going to come up with some good ideas. Like I said, the truck is very extreme in its looks and everything, but... Some of the technology is absolutely insane. In the end, what they came up with in this truck was that truck actually had a bump of 136% over the average of a T660 for 12.8 miles per gallon, and it reduced the combination weight by more than 7,000 pounds. So that's an ability to haul more payload. Now, in my world and in most truckers' world, that doesn't really change much but imagine the ball callers out there you ball callers that are getting paid you know by the by the bushel you know uh, imagine you just added <laughs> you just added three and a half tons to your payload and your truck's getting 12.8 miles to the gallon on average i mean imagine how much money you guys would make so, the truck actually has a Packard MX-11 engine in it, and it's rated at 440 horsepower. A uh, little underpowered, I don't know. It, it has a 12-speed automated transmission. And uh, But here's where things get interesting. All right, so I'll apologize ahead of time, because I'm going to try to read this word for word here. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm not good at the uh, whole, you know, looking, memorizing, you know. Uh, especially not with all this, but this is something that could change the efficiency industry. Okay. Systems like this could make my 379 Peterbilt, you know, get a lot better fuel mileage. So here's, here's what I'm excited about with this truck. In addition to the engine and the transmission, the truck features a 48 elect, uh, 48 volt electric generator, creating a mild hybrid system. Now, that doesn't mean that this powers the engine at all. The engine is not electric at all. Here's what it does. It leverages next generation lithium ion batteries, batteries that are recharged through regenerative braking. 
This allows the Kenworth Super Truck 2 to operate electric fans, electric steering, power for electric cooling, and HVAC pumps. All things that were mechanically driven and took horsepower away from you. Horsepower and fuel. Uh, the hybrid system also provides an overnight engine off hotel uh, solution. In addition, the 48 volt gener generator powers the exhaust heater in the in house developed closed coupled after treatment system. See, I never could have remembered that and actually said it. Uh, which it, it demonstrated CARB 2027 ultra low NOx compliancy. So isn't this actually the problem with emissions trucks is that it messes with the engine to do the fuel burner and burn everything off? I mean, if it's actually powered by a separate unit, isn't that better? I mean, instead of being an after treatment system, it's a separate treatment system. You have your en you have your engine and then you have something powered by a whole different system that is now going to heat your fuel, you know, and, and for those of you who don't know exactly what, you know, the DPF is, it, it heats up and burns off the carbon and blows it off, which actually is a system that is working. I know what you guys are say, going to say. Yes, they're horrible. They're horrible. Government jumped way too fast. Manufacturers weren't able to keep up with it. Uh, people have gone out of business. This has cost people their livelihoods. I know, but as far as emissions, it actually is working. A properly working truck. I have seen three. In fact, I have a friend who is just trading in a four-year-old truck with a little bit over 200,000 miles on it. And uh, he runs a lot of local work. But if you look in, he has turnout exhaust. You look in his exhaust pipes, there is absolutely no carbon in there. And that's pretty incredible. So this stuff is working. But let's talk more about this system. So look at this from a different perspective. This diesel engine is actually more of a diesel engine than any of us have in our trucks right now. And by that, I mean this engine powers the truck. That's what it does. It powers the truck, which is what we all think the diesel engines do. Well, no, diesel engines don't just power the truck. They power your fan. They power your water pump. Uh, my water pump is mechanical. It's not even belt driven, but even the belt driven ones. Powers the water pump. HVAC, we have all felt it when you're climbing a hill, climbing a hill, heavy, you know, you're downshifted, you're holding speed, and then your fan kicks on. Slows you down a little bit, but you feel the horsepower loss. It's actually a big horsepower loss. I forget what it is, 20, 30, 40, but it is a big horsepower loss, uh, you know, when that big old fan turns on. The other thing is we've all been in that, that little four-cylinder car, say a Geo Metro back in the day or Ford Aspire, where you turn on the air conditioner and it just loses all its power. Well, diesel engines have a lot of horsepower, but it still costs you horsepower every time that compressor kicks, that compressor kicks on. Even your alternator is causing power, is costing power. If it wasn't hooked to the alternator, it wouldn't be costing you anything. So here we're talking about the HVAC system. The fan, everything is off an electric system. That engine only has to move the truck. That's basically what it's doing, moving the truck. Uh, it has all the, because of all the hybrid, all the batteries in it, it actually, you know, no need for an extra APU. So this is what I was considering incredible technology in this. Again, this truck is very extreme. This is a concept truck. I don't know that we'll ever see it or won't see it, but concept that just showed all kinds of technology. Now, some of these things, what if I could put them on my Peterbilt? Let's talk about that. So obviously this would cost way too much, you know, to put on my truck, you know, an 06 Peterbilt 379, but imagine if it came factory with it. So now this is where this goes from extreme to maybe not so extreme. What if a new truck came with this hybrid system that doesn't control the engine? Diesel just runs it down the road and has this hybrid system with batteries and everything. Still looks like a big long nose Pete like they all did, you know, for years and years. But now it has this one. Well, this actually creates a 10% fuel efficiency just by reducing the drag that the engine shouldn't even have to do because it can be done by electric. Imagine how cool that would be. Okay, so now this is where I say open your eyes a bit. It doesn't mean that to do this, you're going to have to buy that truck. It doesn't mean you're going to have to get the PACCAR MX-11 engine. 
it means that they came up with incredible technology on this. Of course, they were going to super extremes, like I keep saying. This truck actually sits on the ground almost. They put the engine in the frame rails behind the, the dry or behind the steer wheels. They totally encased the, the steer wheels, you know, for max aerodynamics. And aerodynamics are huge. They went extreme. They wanted to show what they could do. But there's so much cool technology on this. So that truck sits on the ground. It actually can raise up for rough roads. And then it said, then it said for the smoother interstates, you can put it down. I guess you ain't doing that in Indiana. Thieves steal our tax money and can't bother to fix your roads. And, and other states don't think you're out of this. Indiana's just the worst that I run in. Anyway, <laughs> <coughs> but that 10% is a huge, huge improvement. And people say, well, it doesn't have the interior. It does have the interior, all right? How often do you have a passenger? Now, I'm not saying I would want to give up the passenger seat. These guys sit in the middle. That would take a lot of getting used to, but, and I don't know, maybe it'd be better turning corners and stuff. It's got them big windows you could see better. I don't know. You know, some idiots put big drop visors on trucks and put big hoods out in front of them. And <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, but the sleeper in this thing has a table that folds out. It has a, a sofa in the back. It has the, the bed folds down on top of. Doesn't sound too much off from the beloved studio sleeper that Kenworth's been using for years that we're actually sad that we're slowly seeing it go away. Uh, this actually has it. So again, this was just, well, okay. So they're, they're the 48% reduction in drag on this truck. That's why it was extreme. They wanted to show that. Now I'm not saying that if the, one of these hybrid systems was on my truck, uh, you know, I would get 12.8 miles a gallon. Cause obviously I wouldn't, they're talking about a 10% improvement. But imagine all the possibilities. And actually, mine would be better because I don't have the emissions on there. Um, I wouldn't have the, the burner and everything. But there'd be no use, use there are no need for an APU, which I don't have right now. Uh, but I actually have one I intend on working on pretty soon and hopefully get it on the truck. But you would have the APU already included. And none of them extras on the engine. And we haven't even started to talk about, you know, engine wear. Or mechanical wear. Now, obviously, you'd have the electric problems. You you would still have problems with the electrical system. You're going to have the HVAC pumps going to go out. You're going to have the, you know, your electric fans going to go out. So I don't think it's actually going to lower maintenance on that. But how much easier is that on your engine? You know, they're talking about engine efficiency of drag. If you're driving on the flat and all that engine's doing is is just driving the truck, when your compressor kicks on, you know, your AC compressor kicks on, engine doesn't feel it. Um, you know, if, if it is a hot day, you're driving on a flat for some reason, your fan kicks on or when your air conditions on and the fans got to keep kicking on none of that, the engine doesn't feel it. So guys, that's what I'm saying. This is, uh, this is, uh, there was a lot of good technology that came out in this. Well, guys, I hope I opened your mind up a little bit as to just how much cool stuff did come out in this truck. Obviously, as soon as you see it, you want to hate it. You think it's electric. It's not electric. It's diesel. Uh, but there was so much great technology that came up in this. That whole thing of a separate system working everything else, I think it was, I forget who did it years ago. Right after I started driving, uh, APUs were just kind of becoming the new thing. And somebody had tried to have an idea of having the water pump, the alternator, uh, or the water pump, everything electrical run off of an APU, a separate engine. It didn't work out. <coughs> I know others have tried it over the years. It's been tried with solar, other things. To me, this is a huge step forward in the future. And would I drive one of them trucks? Uh, probably. I think, I, I don't know if I'd want to drive it you know, all the time, maybe I would, maybe it'd be awesome. Uh, would I own it? Probably not. I don't think I can afford to own it as an owner operator. There's a, there actually is a lot of extra working parts on that. Uh, but who knows what the future holds? I don't think this truck is going to see the road. Maybe it will. I don't think it's going to. A lot of them concept vehicles don't, but either way, this was not wasted. They learn a lot about aerodynamics. They learn a lot about different things they could do. For instance, 
putting the engine, you know, down lower in the frame rails. Uh, I don't know how that's going to affect how low the, the um, oil pan is or if they fix that problem too. Uh, different suspension things, uh, but that that hybrid electrical system that controls everything else I think is amazing. So anyway, comment below. Uh, I hope, just, just think about the things that I said. Uh, I'm not saying, hey, hopefully we're all driving this truck in a couple of years because, you know, I, I love my Pete. And, uh, but just love this technology. And thanks for watching guys. Uh, comment below. I read all the comments. Sometimes it takes me a little while to get back. Uh, sometimes I don't need to. Some, sometimes I just like the comments and, and, uh, uh, but yeah, uh, I look forward to it. It's one of my favorite parts of this is, is the comments. And, uh, if you don't want to actually leave a comment below, you can email me at finchresources at gmail.com. Finch, like the bird, that's my last name. And you can find me on Facebook and Instagram. I do more on Facebook than anything. I usually post just about daily on Facebook. and uh, But that's under Trucking Resources. And also, you can check out our website. We do have some swag. We have some other products uh, on there that are just pretty much truck specific or, or, you know, can help truckers. And that is at finchresources.com. So thanks a lot. I'll catch you on the next one.